Hello everyone, my name is Arvid and I am a lighting supervisor at Image Engine and as you can see I'm really enjoying creating environments and this specifically is more about an island landscape with lots of water and trees and all of that so I really obviously this looks very Star Wars -y like and that's because I was quite inspired by um, Scarif which is one of the environments in Rogue One. First of all, these are my references, and I guess some of them are from the movie, so this was my main angle I kind of looked at. You can see the dense foliage, and obviously I did not have the concrete, but I tried to get the same kind of bunker style. Um, some ships coming in, cloudy sky, similar water, and then um, I think I generated a couple of ones using AI. Some close-up interior renders of the um, forests. There was no specific concept I followed, but it was like kind of all of them together. Um, and the first thing I had to do was create these palm trees and there's no good library online so I used Speedtree to create all of these different variations and um, use them to scatter. So if I hop into Speedtree, this is kind of one of the pre, not this one specifically, but I started off from that preset palm tree and then I clean it out a little bit, adjusted the lengths and the heights and the randomization and I also made sure that I enable um, aging so I could kind of export different growth um, steps so this was maybe variation A, B and then C or something for final so I had three different states per palm tree and then I was also randomizing them you can see you can kind of can you can hit the randomize button create different variations you can change obviously the aspects of each thing you can change the number of leaves and whatever but yeah as I said I exported these ones individually and that was kind of my starting base but now let's head into the palm trees so as I said if you watch my previous tutorial previous to this one um, I went a very detailed overview of how to use these labs nodes and this is kind of now uh, the breakdown so you if you don't know how I did all of the setup you watch the previous video that will give you some good insights uh, but as you can see here is my little palm trees sometimes the viewer is messed up a little bit but yeah so as you can see I have these different ages different states of palm trees and I can actually visualize them all in one go using the biome plant define and these are all my variants. You can see I've got small ones, big ones, lots of broken up ones. And I use these ones on all the points to scatter them. And these are in the end my scatter points. You can see that they are kind of cut off by the, by the camera. So if I look through my shot camera, um, they are just outside the frost and they are cut off just to be quite efficient. And then I scatter them like that. So I have all these little palm trees but yeah, you can see these are all my proxy little palm trees and then I can switch to the high res ones, which are these ones um, and they are kind of quite scattered. That's kind of the idea. And then I did the same for, to, uh, to, uh, for the ferns and bushes. Um, lots of points, lots of, I think I've got 8 million little small bushes. Uh, these All these little very small ones under the palm tree. So there's quite a bit of them. You can see I've got um, rocks on the shoreline and I've got rocks in the water. So we look into those as well. Um, shore, these are the kind of the scatter points on the shoreline. Let's see if we can find those. Also very small, you can see they are little um, logs and coconuts and stuff like that is scattered. It's um, very small stuff. And all of these are, um, these smaller things are coming from Megascans library. So then I have buildings a little bit of kit bashing, but mainly it's quite basic drag and drop stuff. These bigger elements here are from the CG lounge. We had a challenge back in the day, and these are some models from that. If I look through my shot camera, um, we are looking, we are starting out here in the foreground. This is the very foreground. I've got more assets from um, the challenge. You can see all these um, tanks and fuel pumps and more TIE fighter elements. So all of that, this was a bit more kit bashy. So I added all these elements on top here. I added the rooftops. I can click through it pretty quick. Um, so this was my starting building. 
Um, then I added these paneling stuff, added a lot of um, geometry. Let's actually copy this here. So I added these side things and I copied them all together. Then I used a lot of points on top of this to create some kind of nice um, detail, scattered some little antennas and such on top. And that's kind of the main building as well. And volumes, I used Axiom to create these small smoke plumes and I um, have a very small time scale. I think they're like 30 meters in, in height. Platform we can ignore. And these are kind of the elements. And then for the terrain, um, it's the most simple terrain ever. Uh, you can see these were, were my own initial tests here, but in the end I just ended up using a very basic one. So I'm starting out with a height field, adding a little bit of noise. That's pretty much it. Adding more detailed noise in between. You can see I wanted to create some kind of underwater rivers. So I'm used um, distortion in the uh, masking. So distortion lattice wrapping to create these nice swirls. I used them as a noise, added more noise in between. And this is kind of my underwater section where I added more details to it. Um, and then I did some remapping to place uh, trees. Uh, let's see. Um, I loaded in the buildings. You can see they're kind of very subtle, but these are kind of a little bit of geometry that I just wanted to block where no trees will be growing. This is kind of where my tree scatter location will be. Then I created the water surface, uh, sorry, the texture. So I used the Gaia texture base. It essentially creates a quick noise on top of everything. Um, and then I just textured it. So at the, at the bottom here, using all these color nodes, um, I created this terrain. It's very simple, technically. Um, and that was the water. And then we have the same for the rocks. Um, we will go into more detail in a different tutorial where I'll talk about the ocean in specifics. Otherwise, you can always get the scene files. Render layers are being set up here. Um, they all have their own um, render settings, comma, for kickups, for the TIE fighters, for the vehicle. The cargo ship is pretty simple. Um, it's I just brought it in, animated it in a different scene. Um, it's kind of just going up and down and the thrusters are moving. So I just used that and then I copied that onto a point path and then it's just traveling through the scene. Heat distortion, all of that is being brought together. A simple comma, physical sky rig, uh, some motion blur to get the um, time samples in. And then we rendered everything in ROPS, pulled in all the USD render node, use deadline and we hit render using comma XPU. All right, now let's have a look at comp. The bottom section is just for my breakdown stuff, but the top section is the actual comp. So you can see all my read nodes and all the little comp stuff here I did. Um, quite straightforward. We bring in our raw render, which looks like this. Um, we have obviously all, we played a lot of in lighting to get the look as I wanted. Then I'm just grabbing in the data pass. I did a couple of subtle grades using PMATS to just grab certain elements. So just grade them off a little bit. Um, and then the first thing I did was creating a um, distortion from this kick up. So this is kind of the water kick up where the um, ship flies over. And I use that to eye distort to kind of distort the surface. So it kind of should mimic some water rippling when it flies over. That's kind of the idea. And then I also used um, the obviously the render itself to plus it on top and that gives me this kind of little water effect it's very subtle but in motion it's quite interesting the next step was i added the heat distortion that's the render so it's an, a vector pass which i can then use to distort the image so red is um moving the pixels on one axis and green on the other axis essentially so vertical and, and horizontally i'm copying that into forward motion using vector blur at first you can see there's a little bit of blurriness going on and then I'm using distortion to create these nice little heat distortion effects. You can see it's happening over here. And if I zoom in in the render, you will notice that a little bit better. Um, yeah, here. You can see how it's kind of distorting the image. And that's when a lot of heat is generated. It creates this kind of fl flickering effect. All right, then I'm using my depth channel. For some reason, it's called depth extra. So there's something in common, which is quite bizarre. Usually it should go into depth itself. But for me, Depth Extra is the channel I'm using to create some uh, Z breakups. So I'm using this to uh, add some haziness and some saturation. So the further away you are from the camera, the more desaturated the image will look like. And that's what I'm mimicking here, creating a mask, grading it. So adding 
the hazing, desaturating it. Then I'm doing a little bit of color corrections on certain elements. Nothing too crazy. Um, next up, we are merging the little stormtroopers here. So they're all done in comp. You can see that I just popped over. And I just grabbed from some kind of um, image a green screen. You can see it's very bad CG render. I keyed it, I cropped it until I was happy. Put them on a 2D card, placed them in 3D space using the shot camera. And then they are kind of somewhere in space. And I can, if I wanted them to be somewhere else, I could just adjust the card position. So I could just go into um, the translation here and I could just offset them. So it's super easy to place them and they are sticking because it's all in world position space. Pretty neat. Um, then working with the next element, which let's see. I actually, I first boosted the exposure a little bit. I thought it was not matching quite nicely with the sky. Sky comes in a little bit. Um, the TIE Fighters are coming in towards the end of the shot, or all the way in the beginning. So they're very background element, very blurry. Nothing too crazy needed to be done with this. So I just kind of put them on top. You can see they're still just brighter a little bit coming in here. Then we have our spaceship that is hovering over there. And it comes already with the glow and everything. So uh, raw render, some volumes, did some transmission, Increased the volume, graded it down to make it more contrast. You added some glow on the thrusters and then everything is uh, brought together. And then the interesting thing probably is the sky, um, which is on put on a sphere. So essentially I got this for my Death Star and I got this texture for my sky. I graded that until I was happy. Same with this guy. I put them all on top, key mix it in using the clouds as a mask. So it's kind of behind the clouds color correction, put it on a sphere, and then the spheres look through the shot camera and a scanline render. It's a very big, I think 10,000 unit sphere. And then you can see the skies at the top here. Everything brought together. We have this composition. You can see that's where it's coming in. And then based on that, I did, a, did adjust the grades and such. Then a minor glow on everything. Lens distortion, uh, because uh, it should be kind of anamorph. I added some Lens distortion made it a little bit bigger. You can see this is the warping. Every camera warps. That's why distortion adds quite a bit of realism. Use the anamorphic um, tool to create some uh, astigmatism. So it's a little bit blurry on the edges and kind of distorts it properly. Added chromatic aberration on the sides, vignetting, grain, cropping. And then that's the final output. And I'm quite, quite happy with that. And then I have a quick breakdown as well. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Uh, is it this one actually? No, it's the next. Actually, no, I did not load them at all. Let me pull in the breakdowns. So yeah, that's a breakdown. So I'm just kind of showing the shot again, flying towards the end. You can see the water hazing. And then you can see all the layers we're going back and then we're just wiping over. So this is kind of the idea. Um, for the breakdown and then that's kind of the final shot so um as i said the scene files are available on my patreon if you want to support me there i highly appreciate that and you get um, also the other scenes as well one is a different angle let's see if i can show that one it's this one a little bit closer ship coming towards camera a little bit of a camera shake going on here and then we have like a top up pan where we just see the ship hovering over camera. It's a little bit too macro looking for my taste, but that's kind of the idea. I just thought I can reuse a couple of things in here and the whole setups works quite fluidly. So I hope you like this shorter breakdown video and I will do a, probably a more in-depth, maybe a even a live session um, and how I did everything to answer some questions as well.